Good evening, I'm Peter Doubt. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Anthony, New Mexico. A man is in the hospital tonight after getting stabbed in the chest. A handful of local families are in Austin tonight to honor the police officers and sheriff deputies who made the ultimate sacrifice for our city. Dreams are the culmination of our hopes, ambitions, and support from those we love. They reveal our aspirations and conceal our fears. As many would attest to, dreams are what fuel their work ethic and in some instances give meaning to life. Peter Doubt, resident to Placentia and alumni to Eldorado High School, has given purpose to his dreams as he pursued a decorated career as a television journalist. He attributes the achievement of his dreams to his early success as a nationally recognized essay author, unique opportunities presented to him, and an extensive journalism education at Eldorado. I knew since I was 11 years old, believe it or not, that I wanted to go into journalism. I always loved telling stories, I loved to write, and I loved to meet people and ask questions. So. This was always something that just sort of merged all of that together. El Dorado gave me that opportunity by giving me that, uh, you know, outlet, I guess you could call it. Um, I was the editor in chief of the high school newspaper, took that journalism class with Mrs. Switzer. So I'm very thankful to El Dorado for giving me that opportunity and allowing me to sort of pursue my dreams. Peter was honestly the teacher's dream. He was sort of the type of student that every teacher wanted to have in class. He was very responsible, he was very driven, super inquisitive, really wanted to learn. Uh, and more than anything, I think he just had such a sense of, of who he was, even then. Uh, and you could see that he was trying to learn and grow and become a better person with everything that he did. So he worked really, really hard and dedicated himself to a lot of different activities that made him really well-rounded. Uh, he was an absolute dream to have in class. I would have to say that Peter really thrived for knowledge and he was really an overachiever in school, always at the top of his class, um, pretty well liked. We were able to try all these things growing up and I think it gave Peter this kind of slice of life, like to be more well-rounded. I really enjoyed, you know, going to different places and seeing how people live in, in other parts of the world and other parts of the country and sort of being able to be where the news happens and experiencing whatever is going on in different parts uh, of the country. And I'm constantly um, amazed at how many people I've been able to meet and how many stories I've been able to cover and uh, all of the new wonderful things that I've been able to learn in this career that I've had. It's been a wild ride. This might be the incident that caused this, but he won an essay contest for Mimi's Cafe. And there used to be a network here called OCN News. They broadcast him reading his essay, holding a microphone like a newsman. I'm most thankful for being born in the best country in the world, the United States of America. They played that almost every commercial all day long. Peter would practice the articulation of, of words over and over and over and over again. And we had a video camera and we would actually make movies and he would interview us. As with many dreams, there were obstacles preventing Peter from reaching his ultimate goal, which was to return to LA and become a full-fledged news anchor. I spent many years trying to get back to Southern California. And there were times that I thought, maybe I give up. Maybe I just go into something else. You know, this is a dream that's never going to happen. But I'm glad I didn't because I kept at it and I kept pursuing this goal that I've had since I was 11 years old. I wasn't willing to let others tell me I couldn't do anything. The way the industry functions, to become a reporter on a market news network, a foundation of reporting experience must be appropriated. For me, that was going to El Paso, Texas, working in the border, um, not making any money, and hoping that maybe this dream of mine would pay off one day. But then after two years in El Paso, I went to Dallas, Texas, and continued to climb the ladder, then eventually ended up in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I was a morning anchor for a couple of years. Peter was a perfectionist, and that can be a disadvantage. Um, he always held himself up to the highest of standards. And I would say that him having to learn that he was human and that he couldn't do absolutely everything, and he would be become frustrated but eventually, as he got older, he learned to, to turn adversity into opportunities. And so he, I would say that was his biggest problem, was becoming such an overachiever that he had a hard time knowing when enough was enough. I feel like the atmosphere we're in now, people are pursuing news outlets that are very attuned to their beliefs. Um, so it's almost harder today, I think, 
to be objective because people are always sort of looking to see if you have an agenda. Um, there are definitely more cable news outlets now than uh, when I was growing up. Um, so it's, it's a little tougher, I think, nowadays um, to be a journalist because people are always constantly looking for an angle or trying to uh, find people who align with their particular political beliefs or, or their niche. What I try to do is just be as completely objective and honest as possible. Despite the problems preventing Peter from becoming a reporter in LA, he made a full and triumphant return to his home with CBS LA last summer and has been reveling in his dream ever since. There are many stories that I've done where I know I've had an impact, whether it be uncovering corruption or holding a business accountable or something that affects taxpayer dollars. So um, it's nice to think that there are times when bringing light to issues that people want to keep in the dark have made a difference. And I do believe that what we do is a public service. I do believe that journalism is important to a thriving democracy. Um, journalism is the only career mentioned in the Constitution. And there's a reason for that, because the Founding Fathers knew that in order for democracy to succeed, we needed to have a working press that wasn't afraid to question people of power. So I do believe that journalism um, is an important part of our society. So when I look at Peter today, and, or hear him on the news, or see him on the news, it's, it's interesting because I he's still, to me, the same Peter. He obviously is more matured. Uh, he's grown up, <laughs> literally, a bit. And his voice has deepened, so he definitely seems more like a man now and not so much a boy as he was in high school. But he really carries with him that same personality. There's, there's a kindness behind his eyes, I think, all the time. Uh, there's definitely, um, st you still see that when you watch him on TV today. Uh, he, he's the same kid, he's just a grown-up version of that same kid. And I love that about Peter because I think that says that he's always been really true to who he was as a person even when he was, you know, still in high school figuring it all out. I'm most proud of Peter because he is true to himself. He is a remarkable human being. He has compassion for those he meets. He doesn't take no for an answer, and he has a love for his family. So I would say that just all around being a, a wonderful son and accomplishing his goals has made me the most proud. I know I'm lucky, I know I'm blessed, and I've had great people who have guided me all throughout my career who have helped me get to this point. And I'll always be grateful for that. Whatever it is that you do in your life, you have to have passion, because without it, then what's the point? You'll never cross the finish line. So whatever it is that you choose to do with your life, Go at it 100% and don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Because I can't tell you how many people in my career said, you'll never get back to LA, it's impossible, you'll never make it. But if I listen to them, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. You have to believe in yourself and you have to just never, never give up. You want to do something that you're happy going to work every day. I don't feel like I go to work every day. I feel like I'm getting paid to do what I've always wanted to do, which is ask questions and tell stories. So for me, I'm living my dream. And I really hope that everyone, whoever you are, find something that you're passionate about and do it. And don't give up.